Today on your 5 News at noon, experts claim that nearly half of all child seats are being used improperly. Coming up, how a car seat technician can help you find the right seat for your kid and even help you install it. Plus, we're taking a live look from Windsor Castle in England, where the crowds are still gathered just a few hours after Queen Elizabeth II's coffin has arrived. Thank you so much for joining us for your 5 News at noon. I'm Ruben Diaz. Now, the United Kingdom and the world are saying a final farewell to a monarch and an icon. Thousands attended the state funeral at Westminster Abbey for Queen Elizabeth II, where they mourned the loss but also celebrated her 70-year reign. Ian Lee has the latest from London. The coffin of Queen Elizabeth left Westminster Abbey for a funeral procession through the streets of London, her son, King Charles, walking behind with the royal family. The pageantry followed a state funeral that drew dignitaries from around the world. We come to this house of God, here where Queen Elizabeth was married and crowned, to mourn our loss, to remember her long life of selfless service. On her coffin, a handwritten note from the king that said, in loving and devoted memory. Two minutes of silence punctuated a service of the highest order that ended with the now revised national anthem, God Save the King. This is the first funeral for a reigning monarch to be held at Westminster Abbey since King George II in 1760. Nine-year-old Prince George, second in line to the throne, and his younger sister, Princess Charlotte, attended the service with their parents. Across the UK, crowds flocked to parks to watch on big screens. Some stood in tribute, others wiped away tears. It's a very good send off. The Queen means so much to me. Quite emotional because she's been, you know, our Queen for a lot of years. We're never going to see another real a Queen. The hearse drove the Queen's coffin to Windsor Castle for another service before her private burial at St. George's Chapel next to her late husband, Prince Philip. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Now the crown Queen Elizabeth wore will now be resized and worn by King Charles after his coronation. All right, let's take a live look outside today. It's going to be a nice, strong and hot day as uh, Stephen Elmore joining us now with possible talking about possible record heat. What are we talking about, Stephen? Yeah, we're just a couple days from that first day of fall, but we are ending in a hot way for summer. We're seeing temperatures close to uh, feeling like 100 degrees for today. Those actual temperatures will get close to breaking some records. We've got this nice high pressure system right over us right now that's clearing out all that cloud coverage, resulting in plenty of sunshine over the next couple of days. Taking a closer look, we're not even seeing many clouds out right there. We're going to see maybe a few clouds today, but outside of that, we're just going to see a lot, a lot of sunshine. Taking a look of what it feels like outside right now in the River Valley. We're already getting close to 100 degrees. It feels like 96 right now in Fort Smith, 94 in Fayetteville. Still feeling like 89 in Bentonville, but as we continue to get more and more sunshine for today, it's going to get close to feeling like triple digits as we get closer and closer to fall. Now, the one thing is that we're changing and we're getting back that humidity as we get throughout the midweek this week. But we do have a change going into Thursday. Finally, we'll get some relief from this. But until then, we're just going to see lots of sunshine all the way out till Wednesday. Taking a look at the rest of the day today. Sunshine all throughout. We're going to see those actual temperatures in the mid 90s. Heat index values much hotter. River Valley, we're going to be in those high 90s for those actual temperatures today. Later this afternoon, we're going to see those heat index values cross over to the triple digits. We'll be talking about some potential records going to be broken and when the next cool down is going to be coming in the forecast. All right, thanks a lot, Stephen. Now, new at noon, a man from Boonville is due in court today. This after police claim he fled after a deadly crash that happened last week. Now, according to Arkansas State Police, Ruth Green, who's also from Boonville, was driving west on State Highway 10 near Greenwood. Let's take a look at your map here. It gives you an idea of what we're talking about. This all happened around 6 o'clock Friday morning. Now, according to police, Brandon Stone was driving east when his SUV crossed the center line and hit Green's Jeep. The report shows that Green was killed after the Jeep left the road and then flipped over. Police claim Stone then ran away from the scene. It was later found. Uh, Sebastian County jail records now show a Brandon Stone booked on Friday. His bond has been set a little more than $50,000. He is due in court in Greenwood at 1230 this afternoon. So in just a little bit, he's going to be facing charges of leaving the scene of an injury, 
uh, leaving a scene of an injury accident, rather driving on a canceled, suspended, or revoked license, and careless driving. You can stay with us here. We'll continue to follow this. All right, a woman's body was found inside a burned home on Saturday. Arkansas State Police are still trying to investigate what exactly happened. Now, Mina Fire Crews actually responded to a fire on First Street around 1 o'clock that afternoon. Now, they thought nobody was living at the home because it had no utility connections to it. Firefighters then found the woman's body as they tried to put the fire out. According to reports, agents with the state's criminal investigation division are now working to find out if there's a connection between the fire and a missing woman from the area. The body has since been taken to the Arkansas State Crime Lab to determine a cause of death, and they will identify who that woman is. Teams of walkers all coming out to pre help prevent suicides through the annual Out of the Darkness Walk. Now, you may have heard of this. It's actually a national event, but a walk was held Sunday at Orchards Park right here in Bentonville. Organizers tell 5 News that suicide impacts one in five families. They hope to draw the attention of to keep the issue uh, at heart and to keep other families from experiencing a suicide loss. It's time to have that conversation for first off. We, we need to reach out and let people know that they're not alone. And having those conversations and showing that community support is the first aspect that we can do that with. Now, the walk does support the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention's education, their research, and their survivor support programs. Now, ahead of Sunday's walk, organizers posted to Facebook that more than $47,000 had already been raised. They had 47 teams listed and about 500 people signed up to participate. All right, you may not know it, but this week is Child Passenger Safety Week. So what does that mean? It means there's going to be a lot of people looking out for you. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is taking part in the, quote, right seat awareness campaign. You can find out if a car seat technician, technician is available in your community through the NHTSA website, or you can also contact your police department directly to see if maybe they have a tech available. They can help you find the right type of car seat for your child. They can often make sure that it's installed correctly for you as well. Now, research actually shows that about half of all the car seats being used right now are actually being used the wrong way. All right, if you haven't already taken advantage of it, Target's car seat trade-in program is still going strong. It's going to be happening through Saturday this week. You can bring your old car seats in into a Target and get a 20% off coupon. Now, you can use the Target Circle app, download it to purchase a new car seat or stroller or other baby gear. By the way, Target is partnering with a waste management company to recycle the old car seats. A popular consignment sale is back in Rogers this week. The fall winter event for Raylanas of Northwest Arkansas goes through Saturday. It's happening at the Frisco Station Mall in Rogers. Now that's going to be Suite one A1. I always want to say 1A. It's A1, like the sauce. Organizers believe they will have more than 1,800 families reselling with more than 140,000 items for sale. You can shop for kids, clothes, baby equipment, furniture, toys, and a whole lot more. Admission is free. Prices are 25% off on Wednesday and Thursday. All right, so the fall season is obviously here. It should be getting here soon, right? <laughs> Football season, especially for Razorback fans. In every game, there's 100 moving parts, right? But a big factor to how your team does is the players' health. Five News reporter Jose Carranza brings us some more information on how medical professionals are helping the Razorbacks stay safe on the field. When the kickoff goes off, you watch the first line of guys hit. You watch the next line of guys hit. I don't care where the ball is. I don't care if it's caught. I don't care if it's through the end zone. I'm watching to watch the collision. Last year, the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences partnered with the University of Arkansas to keep Razorback athletes game ready. You can't start a race with a half full tank. You're not going to finish the race. And so if you're not fully hydrated and properly hydrated leading into a game, you won't be able to perform. While stakes may be higher and with more fans, college football may seem bigger than high school football, but at the end of the day, the game is the same. It's all about resources. The game's the same. Speed's different. Size is different, but the game is the same. Injuries are there. Injuries are a little bit higher up, the higher the speed the collision will become, so you get a little bit more of that stuff, but it's the resources. For health experts on the field, their concern is the well-being of the players. From muscle strains, broken bones, or even concussions, football can bring a number of injuries. At the time of the injury, it's the recognition. If they have it, they're done. If they don't, okay, then let's get them back on the field but nobody really wanted to be the one that made the call. And so as long as you're willing to make, yep, they've got it, they're, they're done, it's the return to play that you gotta be smart about. But for Hogs playing for their state, it's about hard work on and off the field. So this is just another weekend for them, but the accumulation of all that work they put in is just on Saturday game day, but it never really ends for them. But once the whistle blows, then it's just time to play football. In Fayetteville, covering news where you live, 
Jose Carranza, 5 News. All right, Arkansas Urology is offering some free prostate exams starting tomorrow. It's all part of the 18th annual kickoff, the men's health, as part of the part of the Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, right? So according to organizers, one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. Now, in our area, you can actually get a screening for free from 4 to 7 Tuesday afternoon into the evening. It's going to be happening at the Bentonville Urology location on Southeast Mary Road. The screenings include both a prostate-specific antigen blood test and a digital exam. If you get screened, you'll actually be entered to win door prizes, including a 65-inch television. Now, here's a good one for you. There was a very special homecoming for a Vietnam veteran, Vietnam Army veteran, returning through XNA from his honor flight to Washington, D.C. Now that's 88-year-old Maynard Kennedy. You can see it was an emotional moment for him. The Patriot Guard writer. Uh, Patriot Guard Writers of America presented him with a plaque in appreciation for serving our country, serving our veterans, family, veterans, family and friends all crowded XNA to welcome him there. They tell us they wanted to give him the welcome that he deserved, one he did not get when he returned home in 1975. They sacrificed their lives, their families and their time, and they never got a welcome home for doing that. In fact, they were disrespected. King came home, all I got was spit in the face and say, you baby killer. Just sorry that it took us 50 years for them to realize that Vietnam was not a conflict, it was a war. Maynard goes on to tell us that he was truly taken back by all the love and support shown, and he wanted to thank everybody for showing up.